So question 11 then from paper 2, the 2021 Higher Maths Resource Paper. This is where it splits into the two parts. Part A, the vectors, recurrence relations. Part B, that's the alternative, the circles and the logs. So part A, this has got the, starts off with the vectors. It's a fairly standard vectors question. Calculate the size of an angle between two lines lying in three dimensional space. So it says specifically, I know this is part B, but this is what it all leads to. Calculate the size of angle B, A, C. Now, I don't know what they look like in space because you can just take different orientations and see it different ways. But B, A, C, if you were to connect them, would look like this. So this is the angle that they want. And the way that you find that is you use a scalar product. You'd need the vectors that radiate away from the angle. So you'd want the vectors AB and AC, and that's why they asked for that in part A. Because if they want the size of angle BAC, then the first thing you have to do is find the appropriate vectors. So they've put that down as a separate question. Maybe just to make sure you're all on the right tracks, so they don't have to do extra marking for correcting for wrong parts. You're going to use that, and then you're going to use the fact that the scalar product, that AB dot AC is equal to the magnitude of AB times the magnitude of AC times the cosine of the angle between them. Just call that theta. So, if you know there's one, two, three, that's just the one part. There's four parts there. If you know three of them, you can find the fourth. So if you know these three parts, you can get the angle and etc. etc. So if you're looking for the angle, you're just going to rearrange that slightly, take these across and divide. So the first part is get these two, get AB and AC. So I want their components, so I can then find their magnitudes. So in part A it said, what is that? What's AB? What are the components of AB? Well, that'll be B minus A. So B is negative 2, 5, 1. A is 3, 1, 8. So putting those together, we've got negative 5, 4, negative 7. And what do I want? AC. Well, that'll be C minus A. So that'll be 7, negative 6, 3, take away 3, 1, 8. Same as before. You can always do these in parallel. Draw these wee pictures. So you've got 7, take away 3, that's a 4. That's a negative 7, and that's a negative 5. Same numbers. If you've got the same numbers, doesn't matter how they're jumbled up, that means, that means the magnitudes are the same. But anyway, it's not asking about that. So, find AB. Done it. Find AC. Done it. So when it says, hence calculate the size of angle BAC, I'm going to be using this, I'll just put it down. The cosine of BAC, I'll put the B angle as a hat and top there, is going to be, it's going to be AB dot AC, that's the scalar product. Remember, there's two ways of finding the scalar product. You can either do the magnitude times the magnitude times the cosine of the angle, or you can do multiply the corresponding components and add them up to get that single number divided by the magnitude of AB times the magnitude of AC. You could feed it all into this and have a big calculation, or you could do the three parts separately. I'll do them separately at the side here. So what's AB dot AC? What is the scalar product of these two vectors? You multiply the corresponding components. It's negative 5 times 4. It's 4 times negative 7. And then do the same with the z components. It's negative 7 times negative 5. So that means you've got negative 20, negative 28, plus 35. So 35 away from 40, and then just call it negative. It's negative 13. So that's worth a mark. That's what's going to go on top here. So I've got negative 13 over. Now I need these. What's the magnitude of AB? I wonder if you can just cheat, because you realise the numbers are the same. Say so equals the other one. I don't know. So it'll be the square root of, it's just Pythagoras on the components. So it'll be negative 5 squared, 
4 squared and negative 7 squared. So it'll be 25, 16 and 49. That's quite handy because there's a wee 1 there to add on to that 9. So that comes to 90. Now you could break that down, I know that's 3 root 10, but you could be multiplying it by something else that's actually going to be the same thing. Well, put down the other one, it's only given one mark for evaluate this. Because they know it's the same answer, but you might not realise it's the same answer, so I'll just do it. AC is going to be, oh, I'll have to go, I'll just do it again. But I'll better put the right ones down. 4 squared, negative 7 squared and negative 5 squared. And you think, oh that must be the same, so that's root 90. No more marks, so you that's still that one. So this becomes over root 90 times root 90, which is handy because that just becomes 90. So now you've got that, that gets a mark. The mark was actually at that point, but just go to there. So the last part's going to be this. So the angle you're looking for, and I'll put the angle sign at the front now, is going to be the inverse cos of that. Negative 13 upon 90. So it's negative, so it should have been obtuse. I've sort of drawn it obtuse there. Now it's just your calculator, your calculator will give you. You can do it in degrees or radians as well, just doing it in degrees. Or you could just do it in whatever your calculator was last set into. Right, well, I was in degrees anyway. Press that button and what did we get? 98, whoops, 98.305 and so on, because we're taking all these figures as exact, so I can use as many as I like, but use the convention. One decimal place for degrees, so 98.3 degrees for the last mark.